This is Brassius, the grass type gym leader in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. He's also one of the weakest gym leaders in the region, not just because many people will battle him to get their first or second gym badge, but because so many of the other gym leaders, Elite Four and Team Star have Pokemon that would absolutely stomp out any weed he sends out to the battlefield. So as you can imagine, doing a challenge run of this game where I can only use his rematch team, including his abilities and movesets, no held items, and no in battle effect items, might not have have been my brightest of ideas. But it's on part of my grand plan to see just how far each of the gym leaders can make it in Paldea and learn a bit more about them along the way. So I hope you join me on this journey to find out if Brassius could become champion. And if you find this interesting enough, check out the rest of the videos for the other gym leaders linked down below. Now let's begin. Brassius starts out with three Pokemon on his team. First is Smolov, which can be found anywhere near Kurtando's olive fields. Second is Petalo, which hang out near the windmills north of Kurtando, but I got really lucky and found mine in a raid den on the way to town. And last but certainly not least is his signature Sudowoodo, who finally gets to be grass type Pokemon after decades of pretending. It's literally living its best fake it till you make it life. However, we can't get a Sudowoodo just yet because Bonsly don't learn to move Mimic until level 16, and I will be doing my best not to level up my team beyond the next gym leader's strongest Pokemon. So for the time being, meet Bonsly, who also happened to spawn right near Cartondo. Jeez, Brassius must have spent a lot of time in this area. Maybe he made some of the decorations we see around the bakery. Who knows? What I do know is that it's time to kick this challenge off by battling Katie and her bug type Pokemon, which will be hard considering her grass types take double damage from her bug type moves. The good news is that they don't do that much damage, so Smolov can sneak in some tackles before getting knocked out. But Petalo is a lot less useful since it only knows special grass type moves, and Nimble's struggle bug attack lowers her special attack stat every time it hits us. We did managed to put it to sleep for a couple of turns, but our strongest move, Mega Drain, was barely doing any damage. So with just her lead, Katie has managed to wipe everyone but Bonsly. The good news is that Bonsly knows Rock-type moves, which will do double damage to Bug-type Pokemon, so we can finally finish off our Cricket, and do shot the Tarantula with a few HP to spare. Unfortunately, those Spider Bites definitely stung a bit too much. So while Katie is busy to rastalizing her Teddy Ursa into a Bug-type, we sneak in our Once Per Battle Potion to prepare Bonsly for its next enemy. And then we use Protect to cancel Tarantula's chain of Fury Cutters, since this move increases in power each time it hits consecutively, and it will knock us out the second turn. But since the chain is now broken, we can go for a Rock Throw to deal some decent damage, Protect to break the next chain of Fury Cutter, and after living with just 3 HP, we finish off the battle with a win for our Goofy Grass Man. However, you may have noticed that I did not terrestrialize Bonsly during this battle. That's because if I did, we would have taken double damage from all the bug type moves and got knocked out by the tarantula. So despite this being the first gym, I would say that in-game Brassius would lose here every single time. Even though he does stand a chance if he can resist the urge to terrestrialize, the pre-programmed guy inside the game doesn't have that kind of self-control. I mean, this man jumps off of windmills for fun, you cannot expect him to make wise choices during battle either. But that does not mean this run is over. I do want to see how he does against everyone else in the gym challenge, and besides, it's an open world game, and you can do the gyms in any order. So who's to say that Brassius here couldn't just skip the bug type gym until he's over leveled and then pulls off an easy victory? So leave your salty comments at the door and let my struggling continue because things are not gonna get much easier going forward. Our first order of business is to add two more Pokemon to his team. First up is Bounce which can be found wandering around near the north exit of Los Platos. The other is Shroomish, which spawn in the highlands and canyons of Area 3. After taking on several trainers and titans along the way, we were also able to evolve the Bounce Suite and Bonsly before making our way to Lavincia and challenging Iono. And of course, her first Pokemon is part Flying type, so not only does it take half damage from our Grass type moves, it deals double damage to all of our Pokemon. My only option was to use Play Nice, which reduces its physical attack stat by one stage. Now that Shroomish can sorta of survive, it can also set up a Leech Seed to drain some of the Watro's health between turns. The nice thing about Leech Seed is that they don't go away after the Shroomish faints, so Smolev can come onto the battlefield and set up a growth to boost its offensive stats while the seeds drain the last of the bird's health. Although my setup was worthless since Luxio could just finish off Smolov in a single bite, just like olives in real life, yum. So once again, Sudowoodo has to somehow deal with three Pokemon if we want to win. To make matters worse, Iono's first attack manages to paralyze her tree. And since I was faced with so many opponents, I decided to go for the Mudslap strategy to lower Luxio's accuracy. After all, she cannot knock us out if she can't hit us. After two Mudslaps, I 
I decided to switch over to Trailblaze, that way we can actually do some damage to Luxio, and I use the same strategy against Belly Bolt. Two Mud Snaps, then Trailblaze. Although I also have to use up my one time potion to make sure we can make it through to the final Pokemon. The only problem was that Sudowoodo kept being stunned by paralysis, so that Belly Bolt got our HP really low before getting knocked out. And despite having used Trailblaze like five times to also boost our speed, Iono's Miss Magius could just hit us first and one shot the Sudowoodo. So once again, Brassius just loses here. Sudowoodo could bulk its way through Luxio and Belly Bolt since it's a very physically defensive Pokemon, but Miss Magius uses special attacks and has such a high speed stat that we can't even hope to get a hit in. Iono is just that good. However, I am better. You see, once you complete the Sunflora Hunt and Artisan, you can talk to the attendant one more time and do it all over again. But this time, you get a special reward for finding all of the Sunflora, a Sunstone, which can be used to evolve Petalo into Lilligant. And this flower is an absolute powerhouse of a Pokemon. It learns two amazing moves the moment it evolves. First is Quiver Dance, which boosts the user's special attack, special defense, and speed stat by one stage. Then we have Petal Dance, a powerful grass type move that locks in for 2 to 3 turns, then applies confusion to its user. However, thanks to Lilligant's own tempo ability, we will not be confused when the move ends. We also get to keep Mega Drain, which allows us to restore some health while knocking out Luxio, but since Iono plays dirty and paralyzes us, I decided to drop my one time heal, then set up some more Quiver Dance. And then I go for the Mega Drain to try and restore some of our health, although thanks to that pesky Electromorphosis ability, Belly Bolt kept knocking it back down to the red over and over again. But that's okay, because now that its own HP is in the red, it's time to twirl! And not even her Miss Magius is safe from our overpowered Lilligant. Oh no! How could I lose? That's because you underestimated the power of Mr. Shocky Sheep. But I've never met a Mr. Shocky Sheep. Never mind that. Are you doing okay, Brassius? You sound a little different. Oh, I'm doing just fine. Thank you for asking, Miss Iono. Wow! How did you just change your voice like that? You have to teach me! As much as I would love to take you on as my apprentice, I'm afraid that that is no mere voice acting. Take it away, maestro! So you don't remember me at all? A talking Pokemon? I never forget someone like that! Which is strange, because we should have met when you were recording for your 10 Sides of Paldea videos. How did you hear about that series? I did make a sample episode, but it just didn't vibe with me. Too much promo. Not enough Ayana! So, no Marie falling out of the sky? No, friendo. Although that definitely would have made for some good content. I see. Seems we're back to square one. So, uh, wanna be in a video? As fun as that sounds, I think I'll have to pass. For now, I have to focus on figuring out what's going on. Aww. Alrighty then. Another time. See ya later, friendos! Thanks, Ayono. See ya! Seems like you've hit a dead end. Uh, not quite. I do have one more lead, but to do that, I'm going to need you to become champion. <laughs> that is quite the grand role for someone as meager as me! But if these past two battles have been enough to pass my audition, I will gladly play my part in creating your masterpiece. I'm just trying to find my way home. No masterpieces here. It seems you've been blinded by a mud shot from Arceus itself. You see, little maestro, art imitates life. Your journey, your struggles, your companions along the way. They are akin to the shapes and colors that take form. What you see as mere inconvenience at present, I see as the outline for a wonderful masterpiece. Truly avant-garde! Uh-huh. I don't get it, but I can kind of see where you're going with this. Anyways, let's make our way to the next gym. As you wish, my Having obtained our second gym badge, we decided to take on the Lurking Steel Titan and level up our team a bit before heading out west towards Cascarafa, where we finally get to have a type advantage. All we had to do was set up one Quiver Dance, then twirl our way to victory. <laughs> Man, Lilligan is such a strong Pokemon. It could also twirl through all three of the students looking for clues to the secret menu order in Medali, which was Brassius' favorite gym test. He thought that all of the clues were very tastefully hidden. Larry's Komala was not impressed by this joke and used Yawn to put Lilligan to sleep, which meant that a dud on Sparse could knock out our Power Flower before we could wipe him out with our Twirl Power. We did some chip damage with Dolive, then sent out Serena to dropkick this roadblock out of the way, although he did manage to paralyze us with a glare. This left Larry 
Harry with just his Star Raptor who intimidated us and oh yeah, has a flying type move that can one shot anyone on our team. But by a stroke of luck, Shroomish got to trigger its effect spore ability and put the bird to sleep right as it got knocked out. This meant Sudowoto could safely come in and trailblaze through Star Raptor's HP and finally get in a sneaky sucker punch to finish it off before it can cut down our fake tree. We got quite a bit lucky here but hey, a win is a win. Things were looking up for Brassius but before we go on to the next gym it was time for a detour. You see the way I handle the moveset rule for these runs is to teach the endgame move to my Pokemon as soon as it's available. For some TM based moves that means I can't get it until I've defeated one of the last two titans since most of the TMs are available in the overworld but are hidden on some ledges or cliffs that I need to glide or climb to reach. There is however an exception. The TMs for the elemental punches are only available as craftable items from the TM machine but to get the recipes I need to defeat Don Atticus. I generally don't talk about the team star battles because the extreme limitations of these runs make them near impossible to win, especially against those star mobiles which will run over anything I try to use. I guess that makes sense lore wise too, the gym leaders simply cannot defeat team star and that's why all of their bases have remained untouched for like a year and a half. The only way I could win the fight against Atticus was by not terrestrializing Sudowoodo and alternating between spamming healing items and rock slide. Now I know this obviously breaks all the rules I've set for this run and you can get a salty at me as you want but unless you can clear this challenge run with all these restrictions I don't want to hear it. My priorities are on keeping the team as true to character as possible and seeing how Brassius does against the gym leaders in Elite 4. So if I have to fudge the rules a bit to get a TM from Team Star I think that is a-okay. Besides I still have to put in the extra work to actually craft a TM. This includes grabbing a chocolate churro to boost the spawn rate of Metatite as well as to go through all the set spawns for Sharkadet whose drop so neat to craft a TM. All this just to teach Sudowoodo Fire Punch. While we're at it, I also picked up the TM for Hyper Beam so Lilligant can be even stronger and evolved Olive into Arboliva on our way to Montana. You know, I should probably wait out here. You climbed so far up this icy mountain, only to turn tail moments before reaching the warm refuge of a magnificently musical town? There's a couple of candles near the entrance, and those speakers blast the music so loud, even a graveyard buried deep below the snow could enjoy the concerts. And here I thought I was the strange one in this pair. Well, I'm already lost enough as it is. I can't risk getting a curse placed on me by one of those ghost type trainers in town. You speak as if Haunter is the only thing that knows how to use curse. Could it not be said that life itself is filled with Curses? Things such as these circumstances of our birth and our present predicaments can often weigh us down much more than a simple curse. And unlike the ones cast by Haunter, the curses of life cannot simply be cured by a momentary stop at a Pokemon Center. You didn't have to go that deep. I simply speak from experience, my dear friend. There was a time when I too felt cursed by the world. Any art piece that I'd pour my soul into would simply not sell. Yet the ones I put no care in would rake in profits beyond my wildest beliefs. To watch my every piece of passion fail felt like a nail getting struck into my soul. Until one day, I broke. What is the meaning of art? if there is no soul. You know, I had a similar conversation with Iono, and she was very adamant about doing the thing that doesn't really sell as well, as long as I'm having fun with it. Anyways, how did you end up getting better after all that? It was all thanks to Hassel. I had a lucky encounter with that runaway musician, and after letting him stay at my atelier, he decided to return the favor. As the future head of the Dragon Clan, he was trained in every aspect of running a large organization, and he used that knowledge to help me find some patrons who would support the art that I wanted to make. So where can I find a hassle? He's usually at the academy these days. That's not what I meant. I suppose, just like we can have curses, so too can we have blessings. Although I am unaware of any particular methods to acquire either. Then again, so many things had to happen in order for me to meet Hass that I may as well simply dismiss it as pure luck. Same answer as Iono then. Luck. She may be a rambunctious child, but it appears that Miss Iono is wiser than she lets on. Perhaps I should take her on as my apprentice. I think you should focus on getting the gym badge instead. Now go break a leg, Brassies. Avant garde! And so he went into the spooky town to battle the spooky gym leader. The one bit of good news is that this guy named MC Sludge would commentate during the match over the speakers, and I could hear it all the way out here. So it really sounded like Brassies started out with Lilligant and Arboliva. They set up a quiver dance and attacks the bayonet with an energy ball since that thing has an ice type move. And then he goes for a pedal dance to finish off the first ghost and an energy ball to break Mimikyu's disguise. Meanwhile the Mimikyu hits Arboliva, triggering its seed sower ability which creates 
creates a grassy terrain. This will heal every Pokemon on the ground at the end of each turn, and boost the power of grass type moves by 30%. In other words, Lilligan's twirly attack can now easily one-shot Houndstone. The crowd was going wild, giving Brassius' Pokemon all sorts of boosts in the offensive stats and speed, which was bad news for Rhyme and her toxicity. Seems like Brassius had an extremely easy time winning this gym badge. Before running off to the next town, he decided that it was finally time for him to evolve little old Trumish. You see, this Pokemon usually evolves around level 23, but there's a really important move that it can only learn while still a Shroomish. Spore. This is a powerful grass type move that can put any enemy to sleep with a 100% accuracy, and Shroomish doesn't learn it until level 40. And now that it knows the move, it can finally evolve. And since our team is fully complete, we make our way to Alphernada and battle Tulip. The strategy here should be quite familiar at this point. Set up a Quiver Dance, then twirl around and sweep through most of Tulip's team. However, this won't work on Florges, who has the highest special defense stat amongst every Pokemon available in Paldea. I suppose the best way to fight Bulk is with Bulk, so we send out our Bolivanex and set up a Leech Seed. Then we chip away at its health with an Energy Ball and have Serena finish off the battle with a Trop Kick. And that left us with just one more gym badge to get. Not gonna lie gamers, I was a bit worried going into Grusha's gym, since Ice types deal double damage to a Grass type team. And of course, he leads with a Frost Moth, which resists our Grass type attacks. So I had to go for the Hyper Beam, which makes us unable to move for one turn. Thankfully, both of his Blizzard attacks missed, so we could take down Grusha's first Pokemon, but that Hyper Beam left us wide open to an Icicle Crash, so no twirling around this time. Serena knew a fighting type move, so she was the next obvious option, taking down Bear Tick with a few HP to spare. The Titan tried to use Ice Shard, a speed priority Ice type move, but Serena's Queenly Majesty ability negates speed priority moves, which allowed her to attack with low kick and still not enough damage. That's okay, because Breloom knows Match Punch, another speed priority move, which it uses to finish off the Titan. That leaves Altaria, who instantly blows away our fighting fungus, but its powerful hurricane is not enough to one-shot our Boliva, so we can safely set up our Leech Seeds and take it down with two Energy Balls. Wow, I didn't think this battle would be that easy, but now the fun and games is all over. Having collected away gym badges, it was time to go eat a ham and pickle sandwich, then battle a bunch of Chansey to level up our team in preparation of the Elite Four. To be quite honest, my confidence in this run had gotten pretty high, especially with how well the last couple of battles went. But oh boy, was I not prepared for what would happen to poor Brassius and the upcoming Goblet. Things started out pretty smooth with Rika, knowing that she has a fire type camera up, I decided to set up two quiver dances before attacking, then twirled away without healing Lilligan first. This was a huge mistake, because her Dawn fan had the sturdy ability, meaning it survived with 1 HP and poison jabbed her poor flower. However, this was just a minor inconvenience. Relum could match punch it, then one shot the Dugtrio with a seed bomb, leaving Rika with just her ace, which we instantly put to sleep with Spore, then two shot with seed bomb. So far so good I thought, until I opened my bag to restore my team's self between battles. Yeah, so uh, I usually buy a bunch of revival herbs before going into the Elite Four. It's a good way to restore the team between each battle and remove any possible affection shenanigans. But I was so confident with my win streak that I completely blanked out on buying enough revives. I did try to leave, but in classic Elite Four tradition, once you're in here, there's no backing out. The only way to go was forward. Up next was Poppy, and surely this silly little child won't pose much of a threat, right? I thought it would be a good idea to set up two Quiver Dances, which was fine since Poppy used her first turn to set up some Stealth Rocks. But then her Elephant both threw our strongest move like it was nothing, and finished off Lilligant in two hits. In a panic, I sent out Serena next, whose low kick could finish off Caparaja, but then Poppy follows up with a Corviknight. This thing just resists all of our moves. The one hope I had here was that Corviknight would knock itself out thanks to Brave Bird's recoil effect, and with a slight nudge to its HP from a match punch, it did just that. Now it was time to fight Bulk with Bulk. She set up a Light Screen, we set up a Leech Seed, then she did some minor damage and we did some minor damage, but that's when I realized that we had a secret move this whole time that could turn the battle around. Terrain Pulse is a weak normal type move, but it doubles in power and changes its type based on the current terrain, the grassy terrain, making it do significantly more damage than an energy ball. So after exchanging a couple of more blows, we came out on top, except she had two more Pokemon. The strategy against Bronzong was very much the same, Leech Seed, the Terrain Pulse, wait for it to faint, although we also had to use up her one time heal to survive this encounter. That left just a terrifying pink creature with a giant hammer which instantly knocked our Boliva off the field. At this point, I was genuinely worried, but since this stupid child used Gigaton Hammer on the previous Pokemon, it's not a move it can use back to back, so she went for the Stone Edge which barely
barely did any damage. This meant we could hit it with a fire punch and as luck would have it, inflict burn on the pink menace. There was now hope. With its physical damage cut in half, the gigaton hammer was no longer a threat to our existence. Meaning this fake tree could use its flaming fist to win the battle against this 5 year old. However, this victory was bittersweet. Having enough revives would be the least of my problems here. Brassius simply stood no chance against Larry. He got wiped so hard that if Katie was toilet paper, Larry is a premium bidet fresh from France. On the bright side, I could finally go buy a bunch of revival herbs, so that's good. And then I had to redo the battles against Rika and Poppy before getting to do my rematch with Larry. When I do these runs, I usually give each battle two attempts before declaring a loss. And that's because there's often something I can change between battles like get a Pokemon to evolve or learn a new useful move, but the only thing I could change for this rematch with Larry was my strategy. So I set up a double quiver dance and twirled at him with pedal dance, barely doing any damage. But once the dance was over, I could just blast that floating Bananasaurus with a hyper beam, getting the knockout but knowing all too well that Lilligan had to take one for the team. Staraptor was the next major threat as it could sweep through any of my Pokemon with its brave bird attack, but this thing was also much faster than Poppy's Corviknight, so we couldn't even get a hit in before getting knocked out. And of course, even though it took recoil every time it one shot a Pokemon on my team, it still had 1 HP left just for Pseudo Wudo. We managed to bamboozle him thanks to Terrastalization, and even got to one shot Larry's Altaria, but his Oracorio was just too powerful. Even after using our one time heal, its special attacks would shred through our HP. Well, if I'm gonna lose a run, I'm at least glad I'm losing a run to one of my all time favorite Pokemon. Good job, Oracorio. You You've defeated me. I could come up with some sort of cope excuse for failing a gym battle, but there's no way around the Elite Four. Brassius simply loses here. Of course, having made it this far, I figured I might as well see how Brassius does against his best friend Hassel in the top champion Gita. I mean, we're already here, right? So I cheesed the Larry fight with a boatload of revival herbs and moved on to the next one. We set up a quiver dance while he cuts her health in half with Super Fang. Then we hyper beam the Noivern, but don't really do much damage. Serena can finish it off with a play rough and also Zen headbutt the Dragalgy, although she took too much damage from its poison type attacks. Flapo was going to be another major problem as it resists grass type moves and even though Breloom tried its best, we couldn't take it down. Not a problem for Sudowoodo, even Haxorus isn't that scary since we pack a lot of physical bulk, but Baxcalibur simply smashes through Brassius' art piece of a Pokemon as if it's just an ornament made out of glass. Of the two friends, Hassel would definitely win every single time, meaning two absolute losses for poor Brassius here. He ain't standing no chance to be champion, but like Geet is right there so we're gonna battle her too anyways. So we set up her light screen and then she gets a critical hit which means poor litigant is not gonna get the twirl ever again. However if peace is not an option, Arboliva won't play nice either. The Avalug seems scary because ice type but it has the special bulk of a stick meaning we can easily one shot it. Belusa tried to be threatening with its ice fang but Gita's just biting off way more than she can chew here. Out next is King Gambit who we seed but then finally managed to cut down our Arboliva. Too bad it's got a 4 times weakness to fighting type moves. Out next was a really cool go go and after a very awkward exchange where both of our 90 accuracy moves missed, we managed to take it down, leaving Gita with just a rock terra type Glamora. This should be easy enough since we have a type advantage. Okay, maybe that was just a fluke, but considering Serena was our fastest surviving Pokemon, we have a problem. Breloom's match punch barely did any damage and now Pseudo Wudo gets to be poisoned and lose the benefits of its sturdy ability. We should be fine as long as we one shot though, uh oh. It seems that even against Gita, we're so close to winning, but not even I could turn the tides of this battle. If only I were a go-goat, maybe we'd stand a chance, but... Brassius cannot become champion in Paldea. The grass types on his team might be strong, but they're simply too slow and not nearly bulky enough to win against the likes of Larry, Hasso, or Gita. And I'm pretty sure if you can't beat Gita, you definitely can't become champion, so I guess that's that. And yet, this conclusion is perfectly fine by me. Well, I'm glad you're not beaten up about it. Alas, this means I am unable to aid you in your quest. As I recall, it required me to become a champion ranked trainer, did it not? You know, the only reason I said that is because I need to get down to the bottom of Area Zero, and I'm pretty sure you need to be champion ranked to get permission. Typically, misinformation leads to misfortune, but sometimes it simply keeps a door closed when it wishes to be flung wide open. You're making it sound like you don't need the rank. If it were anyone else, perhaps they would. But I know a guy on the inside. Let me go talk to old Haas and see what we can do. 
It just occurred to me that even though a lot of things changed when I went back in time, the one thing that didn't was the package that Guido needed to send down to the professor in Area Zero. Haha! <laughs> See? Sometimes there are blessings in this world too. Now then, I believe this is the lab we're looking for? You are correct in your assumption. Although I would not recommend being so loud in a place as dangerous as the Great Crater. There's nothing down here that truly Wudo could not handle. Uh, you must be Professor Sada? Your assumption is once again correct. Thank you for the quick delivery and have a safe trip back home. Aren't you forgetting something, Sada? D did that Pokemon just talk? Oh, I guess you really are forgetting something. My memory works perfectly fine. Thank you very much. I would never forget a talking Pokemon like you. Yeah, just like your time machine would never leave me stranded in the past. T who, who told you such silly rumors? You, miss, works perfectly fine. The, the things you're saying make no sense. However, it is better to err on the side of caution. Would you two mind coming into my lab for some tea? I am quite famished after such a long walk. Fine, but Brassius, stay on your toes. So you're saying that I told you about a time machine? Told me? No, no, you put me in it, sent me back in time, and then just left me there. Even in the event that such a machine could exist, I would never send a talking Pokemon of all things unless I had a guaranteed method to retrieve them. Your accusations are baseless. No, you're baseless. You were so excited about sending me through time and so sure everything would be fine, yet here I am, lost. I don't believe you understand the meaning of baseless. For example, I see no time machine here. Do you, Mr. Brassius? So then where does that elevator go? Why, you, did Gita leak some top secret information? No, you did. I think I would know if it was me, and there is absolutely no one else here. So if it's not me, then it must be Gita. Oh, I'm gonna have some words for her. You're such a bad liar, Sada. Actually, she seems to be making a lot of sense. Thank you. Also, you, Brassius, if you wish to leave this lab and return to the surface ever again, you must sign these papers. Avant-garde! So much passion! Brassius, take this seriously, please. Also, why are you siding with her? Well, you do seem to be overflowing with facts that aren't backed by much. I see no time machine, and I see no one else to leak information but the professor herself. Mayhaps some of the toxins from a shrewdle infestation got into your Pokeball and messed with your memory? Seriously? A shrewdle infestation? I guess I can see why the time machine stuff doesn't make sense, but she definitely lied about there being no one else here. Huh? Little maestro, have you heard the sounds of anyone else since we've entered? Would they not come to greet a rare guest such as yourself? Exactly. Seems like those shrewdle toxins do a number on a Pokemon's cognitive functions. Wow. I'm pretty sure I remember you saying something about having a trusty assistant. I impossible. Oh, I finally struck a chord now, did I? Are the papers signed? Indeed, it has been autographed. Then follow me. It appears this talking Pokemon is indeed from the future. Oh my, how truly avant-garde. But what gave birth to this newfound level of confidence, Professor? Gita may know about my time machine, but I am the only one who knows about my assistant. Seems to me that now there's three. I trust you know what will happen if that number goes up. Not to worry, Professor. My lips are sealed. You are such an uncanny man. Now, well then, mind your step as you exit the elevator. See? Time machine. I haven't lost my marbles, only my place in the timeline. So, you're confident that this machine failed to return you to the present? Yes, you were on about how you've done a million control trials and it never failed, and then BAM! I was stuck in a dark room. He was in a storage closet on the second floor of my atelier. There was another random Pokeball that showed up there as well, but then it disappeared. Do you recall what kind of Pokeball it was? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a... A repeat ball? I see. Well, this matches up with our protocols. It seems the me in the future failed to retrieve you and launched a proven retrieval procedure using the repeat ball, which also failed. See, I was right to be worried, but no, you sent me through time anyways. And now you're back. So what exactly did you plan to achieve by coming here? Well, I was gonna have you send me back to where I came from, or should I say when I came from. <laughs> this machine can only send things backwards in time, or bring them to the present. I'm afraid I cannot send you to the future. But you were 
Uh, this was... There's nothing you can do, then I really am lost. It was a moment exactly like this that gave birth to my masterpiece, the Surrendering Sunflora. Now's not the time, Brassius. Well, if you've got nothing else to do, how about participating in another experiment? No, and why are you so obsessed with experiments? I am a scientist after all. Experiments is what I do. Besides, we might gain some insight into your predicament. Or I might end up getting even more lost. <sighs> Quite the stubborn skiddo, isn't he? Say, Brassius, was it? This is technically your Pokemon, correct? Oh, absolutely not. I am indeed the owner of his Pokeball, if that is what you wish to know. Don't fall for it, Brassius. Now, now, maestro, let us at least hear her out. It is quite rude to simply dismiss a lady. I'm glad at least one of you has some manners. Now then, how about we have a little battle? If I win, you will lend me his Pokeball so that I may run a simple experiment. And if you win, well, the best I can offer you is the gems that you see in this very room. Do you truly believe that I would betray a friend just for some rare gems? Yeah, you tell her. I am quite aware of your predicament, Brassius. Commissions and patrons have been on the decline lately, as has your mental health. Unless you can come up with some extravagant new art piece in the next few months, your career as an artiste might be reaching its rightful end. These gems can save it. Quite the silver tongue you have there, Professor. But a simple stone cannot grant my greatest wish. It's not just my tongue that's silver. I've accumulated quite the fortune thanks to my research. Should your art piece fail, I can guarantee to purchase it for a heavy price. One win, and you can continue being an artist comfortably for the rest of your life. So, what do you say? You sure know how to drive a hard bargain, and I will hold you to your word the moment I win! Wise choice. No. Of course this battle doesn't go well, because Sada cheats. We try to hyperbeam her Slitherwing, but it one-shots Lilligant, who is permanently banned from twirling in the end game. apparently. Serena is able to bulk through its lunge attack, but it also lowers her offensive stat, meaning we can no longer one-shot it with the Zen Headbutt, so it takes us 3 Pokemon to finish off her first. Out next is Screamtail, who we can barely damage, but thankfully, our Boliva can bulk its way through. Using that signature Leech Seed to Rain Pulse strategy, we take out the fabulous Jigglypuff, but Flutter Main sets us aflame, leaving Brassius with just Sudowoodo once more. Thankfully we got a critical hit with Stone Edge and managed to knock it out. Then we drop our one-time heal and trailblaze through Sandy Shock's HP, but we could not outdamage the Brute Bonnet, who sucker punched our offensive tree. Of course I didn't want to let her win, but none of my moves could do anything. Here I thought I could be as strong as Gita's Go-Go, but who am I skidding? I'm just not good enough, at least not yet. Well then, a deal is a deal. Now, if you please. Hey, could you maybe not do whatever you're about to do? But I've won. Besides, no harm will come to you from this experiment. That's what you said last time. Well, you seem pretty unharmed to me. I might look fine, but I'm not fine. I'm scared. Do you even know how terrifying it is to be lost? For no one to recognize you? For no one to be able to help? Cause that's what your time travel experiment did to me. And I don't want to go through it again. I don't want to be even more lost than I already am. Then allow me to explain. According to your story, I could deduct that the future me you met only sent you back about a week or two. Which is exactly what the present me will do too. And when I get stuck again? Had you not shared your story, I would say the odds of that are 0%. But if you do end up being stuck, simply seek me out again. Well, if you can't help me out now, how's the past you gonna be any different? At the moment, we only have one data point. There is not much I can do with that. You are simply an outlier. But if that is the case, you will not get stuck again. And if it isn't? Then you'll have a second data point for me. You know I have a master's degree in data science, right? There's not really much you can do with two data points. Maybe not, but I could start to formulate a hypothesis on what went wrong, which would be one step closer to resolving your predicament. So what do you say? Why ask me if I don't have a choice? <laughs> it seems you're quite cognizant of your situation. Now then, let's begin. Hey boss, we managed to find something interesting in the data. Finally, some good news. 
Not sure how good this is. You see, I found two signals of him in different locations. How can there be two? That makes no sense. That's why I thought it must be some sort of fluke. So what changed your mind? When I went to double check the data, I found a third. 